Hey guys, Jay Snow with another Magic the Gathering video for you guys. So this one is about fakes, proxies, and Magic the Gathering scams going on. That was inspired by a Reddit post that I saw. I'll post it in the description below. I'm going to go over just some of the common scams and stuff that goes on in Magic the Gathering. There are, of course, a way lot of more stuff going on since a lot of the cards are super expensive and people want to profit off it. So let's go into what we have here. So, probably one of the most scariest examples is a video I found on a Reddit Reddit site for selling proxies and, and basically bootleg, I think it's called Bootleg MTG. And they were showing off, posted just like a day or two ago, uh, double master foil box toppers with the hollow stamp. And a lot, and some people don't know that fake that the hollow stamp can be faked. It's usually not well at all, but you can put a hollow stamp on the fakes now and you can easily tell by using a loop and then looking at a real card and then looking at the fake of the differences but otherwise most players you know throw this in the sleeve you won't even know and then another thing is double masters just came out last month so they're already starting to you know print out all the expensive cards etc according to bootleggers that i've seen it seems like once a card is announced then 30 days from now there will be the fakes on the market so you definitely got to be careful about that and while you know expensive cards you always want to look to check if the if it's authentic but then they even do even lower price cards which is actually the main issue I have with a lot of these proxy things so for example right here we have a magic 21 uh, fiery emancipation uh, oh god I can't see that word emancipation I can't see the word for some reason but basically it's extended art it just came out uh, maybe two months ago or a month ago and we're already having the proxies for it with the hollow stamp and everything and I mean, just looking from the picture here, I couldn't tell it's a fake, if, especially if it's thrown into a, into a sleeve. And this card, before it spiked a little bit, was only worth around 10-ish bucks. So you would think, oh, Proxiers, they need to sell, you know, Mox Emeralds or Diamonds and Black Lotuses. But no, most of the money for people who sell fake cards is mainly in $10-ish modern staples. And even five dollars. I remember when Fatal Push was printed, there was pictures of people making fake Fatal Pushes, which was a six dollar uncommon when it came out. So almost every card that's around five dollars is what they try to push. So let's take a look at some of the ways you can actually find out if it's a fake or not. So there's two types of tests: that one that you should never do, and then one that you definitely should do. This one requires a jeweler's loop, which you can get usually on eBay at 20 times is usually the one you want to get. I'll post a link of, of example in the description below. But basically, in the green dot, you're looking for four red dots in the shape of an L. And basically, um, basically almost every fake fails this test. I don't think there's any fakes that pass it. I mean, it probably is, but it's probably very rare. And what you do, basically, is you take the loop, you look for the four red dots in the L, and if it's there, you should be good. Uh, the better the loop, the more you can expect it, because of course some people will try to fake the red dots. I think in this picture specifically, the problem was there was tons of red, there was a bunch of red dots all over the place, so that's obviously a fake card. So there's also a website I found that it can also help you detect the fake, so feel free to check that out, I'll put it in the description below. And then the test you should not do is the bend test. Oh my goodness, man. Somebody bent their force of will. I forgot what it was, I'll, I'll post a picture on the screen, but... Basically, it was a box, to expensive box topper from Double Masters, which just came out, and he decided, oh, proxies from China will get here in five seconds, so I might as well bend test the card. All this does is damage the card. That's all it does. There's, there's no reason to do it. I haven't even seen the LGS I went to do it. They're like, oh, let me check if the card's fake, and then they bend the card. I cringe hard because, like, while the cards don't, you know, break easily, you can break the magic card. So why would you bend test if you can just get a $10 jeweler's loop and take a quick look? I don't know, man. That's just absolutely bonkers to me. All right, so here's the feedback for the guy who actually took the picture of the green dot that I just showed you. Here was the feedback page for the seller who sold him that card. So if you notice, his feedback is, one, it's low, so I would never buy expensive cards from somebody with that low feedback. But then another thing is, if you look at the discrepancy, discrepancy, is that six months to 12 months ago, he sold way more items than one month ago, but he had 100% positive feedback. So basically what they do is a bunch of eBay scams to basically get like, they either sell low price cards, like a ton of them, really fast to, to generate feedback and then start selling the fakes, or they'll do a private eBay account and have their friends boost them for them. But, I mean, the telltale sign, of course, is to look at the feedback. Take a look at the dates that the items were sold and what exactly they're selling. A lot of sellers also sell, like, random stuff. 
Like, for example, there's a guy selling car parts and, like, you know, random items that have nothing to do with magic, and then all of a sudden he's selling, like, moxes and black lotuses and guys' cradles. Like, that should be pretty suspect. So always take a look at the feedback, but there are other ways that, that it could happen. And then if you look at the feedback, too, the positive, the 17 from this month were all positive, and only one person who left the positive feedback went to relook at the card and realized it was fake. So, a couple of people got swindled out of like $60 Jaces and stuff. So, yeah, people definitely got duped. So, you could see where the, the price discrepancy on that feedback went. So, let's go on to like a bigger issue. Okay, and then we got last but not least, the eBay bulk and repack scams. So, the only time you should be buying a repack is if you want to like draft old booster boxes with your friends or whatever. And then usually it shows the box and it says repack and it'll tell you you'll get some boosters with common and stuff. It's never worth it for value because they'll never put the expensive cards. So here's a good, you know, example of one. The guy has high feedback, and the problem with that is, is people are reluctant to give negative feedback when they get bulk cards because like, oh, okay, maybe I didn't win the lottery. For 99.99999% re of these repack things, they will never ever put a Black Lotus in a repack. They will never put the Mox you see there in a repack. They're not going to put Ancestral, uh... I what the card's called, I can't really see, but they're not going to put any of these expensive cards in a repack. It's basically a scam, a legal scam, technically, because eBay allows it for the most part, and then you can't really complain about what you got because you there's no way to prove that the guy actually put the cards in or didn't put it in, so you could just be one of the unlucky losers and somebody else may have won the card. So once again, of course, people can make fake feedback saying, oh, I got the card, and then the rest will of the feedbacks from people who bought it will say, oh, man, I didn't get it because of X, Y, and Z. Never buy repacks. It's just not. It's just pointless. Nobody's going to throw these cards in here. It's just total BS. Another issue is bulk lots. So I used to buy a lot of bulk for fun a couple of years ago, but then I started to realize that bulk is really hit and miss because the same couple of companies sell bulk on 50 different websites, and then some people copy and paste the description of their of somebody else's bulk onto their bulk page so they can move their really, really crappy bulk. So I've gotten lots where sometimes I've gotten cool cards out of it, but for the most part, they're trash. And then a lot, and then there was a couple times, one of the worst ones was 50 Minotaurs, man. I got like 50, I got 50 plus of some common vanilla Minotaur from, I think, Gate Crash or something. And it was just a stack of 50 plus. I was like, oh my goodness, this is bad. I mean, it's fun to buy bulk, like if you like the sort stuff and things, but most bulk lots are usually scams. If you want to get bulk, I'd probably just get it from a reputable store, but then that also kind of guarantees the fact that there won't be any hidden treasures. So it really depends on where you buy your bulk, but I would definitely just avoid it unless you're just looking for something fun to do. And the worst bulk to get is anything of a recent set. Anything, if you see any recent sets in the picture or they say recent sets, do not buy it. It's just not worth it. You do not want to be stuck with a bunch of Return to Ravnica commons like I did. I pretty much just threw them in the trash because I didn't want to bother with it. So those are some of the scams and going on in Magic the Gathering, of course. Things are going to change. Proxies are going to get better. I mean, I'm not against people playing with proxies. I don't care really if people play with proxies. But the problem is a lot of people try to resell these things, and then they try to, and then they also try to make play them at tournaments too. Like a Friday Night Magic, I don't think people really care that much. But the thing is, what stops a person from using a fake from for Friday Night Magic, and a couple years later they forget, oh, I bought a proxy, and then they sell the card trying to as real because they forgot to mark it or something as a proxy. So chances of that happening are pretty high. Not to mention Magic community as far as proxying and scams and stuff is not really the greatest to begin with. Not as bad as Yu-Gi-Oh, but then Yu-Gi-Oh doesn't really have as many good proxies as Magic. Yu-Gi-Oh doesn't really try hard with that. So I thank you guys for watching. Feel free to subscribe for more Magic Gathering content, and I'll see you guys next time.